Hang on. I don't like turning off. Yeah, you have to turn oh, it off now. Done it. Okay. Fucking hate Zoom. Hello, Pete. Uh, it's just another one of these fucking things, isn't it? Try and get your head round. It's. it's you know. <sighs> Yeah, I know. I'm too old for this. Life. I mean, my brother was saying to me the other day, he said, uh, he kind of made me realise, he said, we're actually redundant. It's like, we're old people now. It's like, for fuck's sake, I don't want to be redundant already, but here we are, you know? How old are you? Yeah. Are you 60 yet? No, not yet. All right. See, I was 60 last year. Oh. So I've I've got a fucking bus pass. You have. And I've done, I, yeah. I, I shouldn't be talking to you, really, because you, you have gone beyond, haven't you? Well, uh, I don't know if it's beyond. But uh, it's it's somewhere. Yeah, I've only well, got another year. Like... It's no bad thing, even though I've never used it. Yeah, free ferries up here as well, so that's good. All right. Okay. Is it free ferries? I don't know. I think so. Anyway, I hate fucking Zoom. This is um. I'm just using this as a, a kind of like uh, I call it musings. So chit chat about stuff that's kind of going on at the moment, and things like that. And I was kind of like um looking at the Hawaii fires. Have you been following that at all? Um, I've been looking into it a little bit, sort of the last kind of couple of days. I, I sort of I missed it when it first started happening, mm. and then just kind of uh, had a bit of a scout around, you know, in the last kind of two or three days. And it's uh, it's very strange, isn't it? It's very strange. It's a bit weird. Um, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense at all, and I've it's kind of reminding a lot me of stuff that does. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. There's a lot of stuff that yeah, yeah, land speculation. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of people looking at that with sort of predatory instincts and going, you know, we we could do with moving in there, get all these people out. It's a a place of historical interest. Apparently, this Lahona or Lahaina place. Um, well, apparently that's why um, it couldn't be built on mm -hmm. as it was. So, yeah. uh, I mean, it's really fortuitous, I suppose, to any sort of developers that it's been raised to the ground and now, I guess, you know, mm. development is permitted. Good, well, they're, they're talking about the government actually taking it over there, aren't they? So, look, like a, a mandatory um, uh, land grab. And miraculously, a lot of these sort of multi-millionaire places have, have remained unscathed. It's just all, all the conspiracy yeah. buttons for me are, are popping off on this. And it's like, <laughs> I have to be very careful because I'm, I'm already regarded as, as a tinfoil, tinfoil lunatic oh, as it is. But yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there it is. I mean, there, there, there it is in front of us. And you've got the videos of this guy... Um, showing you the power lines coming down and and crackling, um, buzzing, crackling, falling down, and then starting the fires. It's like, these aren't wildfires. Yeah, they weren't started that way. Weird, it looks weird, like... Weird things, like certain things left untouched and, you know, all of that. It's, yeah. It's, uh, but that well, happened in, in California. I don't understand it. Yeah, but it happened in California, didn't it? It's that thing where you've got, yeah. like... Um, you got houses on a completely erect street, and there's not a single um, leaf touched on any of the trees around. It's a bit sci-fi, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, it's a bit odd, should we say? When did you um, get into? Did you? Did you? What? I guess you. When did I go mad? Like, <laughs> I guess you figured out <laughs> when did you become a man. <laughs> no, when did I go mad? You mean? Oh right, no, no. When? When? No, I um. When did you go mad? Yeah, when did you go mad? <laughs> I've been mad for ages, mate. Have I've you? I've been mad a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about 9-11? Did, when did you cotton on to that, if you did? Um, it was a weird event. I was uh, I was actually in a recording session with the band when it all happened. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was, I don't know, it was really exciting. <laughs> no, that's probably yeah. not the right thing to say. Yeah, yeah. But but just the the the... The scale of it was just like fuck me. What the hell is going on here? It was like watching uh, Lord of the Rings for the first time. That kind of like mega, kind of uh, looked like a special effects movie that had been done beyond your imagination, didn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. It was outrageous. But did um, you? Were you suspicious about it initially, or did it take a while for that to? I'm suspicious of everything initially, Rob. Right. Well, I wasn't. I have I'm to say, I have to say. I mean, I'm kind of. I'm quite embarrassed about that, but it took me until about 2009. And then I, I guess it's because the internet, um, I wasn't really big into that for quite a while. And then you start to see stuff. I mean, it's all very well saying you, you, know, you can't have a degree on watching videos on YouTube, but there was plenty of other information coming out from credible sources and all the rest. And I just, that, that kind of stopped me in my tracks. And I thought, oh shit, I remember on the day. And it's kind of like, um, 
It was like watching a, a reality TV program because it was going on all day and from every single angle. So they were they were picking people up and interviewing them wherever they could. And there's this one interview with this woman that worked in one of the Twin Towers. And she was saying, and she, she was going on for a few minutes about this, and she was saying about this team of um, engineers that was coming in every night around about two or three o'clock because she was doing very late shift there. And she said they arrived in, in vans downstairs, came up for the the um, the elevators, and then they were working in the elevators all all these evenings for about two weeks, and then they 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 disappeared, and she never saw them again. But they'd they'd disappear off the premises before the main people came into work, so it wasn't that noticeable. And I never heard that again. I never heard anybody talking to about this thing again. And then this whole thing popped up with the. Um, the art students and these pictures of, of them working on this so-called art project in one of the buildings uh, with these these boxes in the back. Somebody does a check on the box. They find out that they're um they're fuses, you know, fuses for for um uh, for little explosive yeah. devices. So I'm crazy kind of stuff. Yeah, you I missed mean, that. I've, uh, I've read stuff uh, and watched interviews with like kind of engineers and stuff that have kind of you know described how our. Uh, um, a planned explosion happens in places like that and it and you know it all kind of it's very believable mm. <laughs> that it was a controlled explosion or controlled demolition controlled explosions yeah, yeah 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 you look at them side by side it's like of course it is but i guess the thing is that you know, what's people are speculating about these direct energy weapon stuff in in maui and just because that's mm. been so far out of my remit for being mental um but I know somebody that I respect a lot who says that, yeah, 9-11 was directed energy weapons. But there's this part of me as well that says, well, why wasn't it just charges, demolition charges placed placed along the the, the points you can see them popping as, they, as it goes down, you know? Um, yeah, but in a way, though, you know, I, I kind of don't think it matters. I think the, the, the overriding thing about stuff like all of this, like 9-11 and Maui, is that people cannot believe that such a thing would be thought about let alone manifested mm. <laughs> you know um, yeah and and it's that it's 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 getting over that hurdle where you can kind of open up a little bit and and have a little look around and and sort of figure well yeah you know it's it's all possible and and there are plenty of reasons for some people to do stuff like that technology's there it's been there for years you mm. know i mean it was there in vietnam i guess know, so yeah um, well what i mean it's yeah. like the it's the audacity of it isn't it really and i suppose like yeah. you say it's we we're, gen, we're generally speaking fairly trusting to a degree you know and we're, we're distrusting of big government and all the rest of it but you just don't think that people can be that that wicked really no, I think I think nine eleven for me when I started my when I started really getting suspicious about it and started poking about a little bit more, that was it. Kind of opened my eyes a little bit to what you know the extent that people would go to to do something. Mm. You know, it's like you say. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I've never been fond of kind of government, big corporations, and all the rest of it, but I never really understood the amount of energy and and whatever that they would put into something mm. and uh and sort of trying to get my head around 9 11 and the few things that occurred after sort of opened me up a little bit more than i had been i think to the possibility that yeah these people are fucking evil you know yeah but and what's what's the, what's the point because with with me i tend to think um i guess quite holistically about this stuff so i i think about things from through the human sort of the experiential realm, but I also think about them in a, in a more sinister kind of like um, occult sense as well, because that's that's just the kind of way that my mind has always worked. So I mm. I can see I can see hidden influences, but I can't really you know it's not I can't really grab hold of them and say here they are. You can't definitely prove something. It's always like there's I think there's at a very basic level even at the psychological level there's people that have very dark problems um psych psychologically that that are behind this kind of stuff and they i guess they intuitively recognize one another when they when they come into a room together do you reckon yeah 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 i think so uh, also i think um the first thing that i tend to look for is a motive mm -hmm. you know people generally don't do anything for no reason 
yeah you know the you, you have to have some some kind of sense of reason behind it yeah and when you or you know when i've kind of like looked into you know potential motives for all of this kind of stuff and you sort of join a few dots by looking elsewhere and and uh looking at other kind of things and 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 it's you start to sort of see a bigger picture than what you're presented with mm. you know i often and, find uh, that it's it's the angle you can't talk about publicly and that's when if you go close yeah. to something yeah it's like when you start to say mm, about this thing, and all of a sudden there's a big, like there's a big spike, there's a big rise um, in antagonism. Mm. And for me, it's like um, Israel was definitely involved. Um, now, either either in the execution, I think they actually just used a, a bunch of a uh, bunch of jihadi enthusiasts um, as patsies, uh, and I think that they 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 funded them and they they pointed them in the right direction and all the rest of it. Because you had this whole thing with the urban moving systems, you had the five dancing Israelis, yeah, illegal um, residents in the U.S. You had their their um, television appearance and pretty much saying on TV over in Tel Aviv that you know they they were arrested and then they were almost immediately let go. You do know the story about that? Uh, a little bit, but it's not it's not what I've kind of really looked into. Okay. Yeah, for me, it was just like, it, it was that thing. Um, what are these guys doing? So there was um, five, five Israeli guys that were arrested um, filming the first plane going into the towers. And this is, you know, wow. filming it going in um, early early in the morning and jumping up and down, hugging each other, clapping and shouting and hooray, hooray, hooray. So they were arrested, um, as I say, almost immediately um, deported rather than um, kept in the country um, and went on TV over in, in Israel it turns out the two of them were known Mossad agents uh, and they were asked about it. What, what were you doing? Um, why, why were you filming this? And they said publicly, we were there to document the event. And it's like, right. OK. OK. What event? How do you know the event? So everyone was quiet about that. Uh, and they were tied up with this thing called Urban, urban Moving Systems, which was like a, a series of, of removal trucks which appeared in that um in that remote um, crash out in the middle of bloody nowhere as well. So yeah, a lot of that yeah. didn't make sense. And as soon as you started to go near to that connection, then um, get, you get shut down, you know, but it's the same all the way around. If you start to go near a particular, um, uh, a particular group of people and stuff like that, you get shut down. So if you, um, if you kind of assume that it was a planned um episode and it wasn't mm. what we've been presented with why do you think it happened to engage america in a war in the middle east and to clear out some of the the debris uh and the dead wood that um israel wanted sorted out because they've always um, they've always used america as their standing army basically they don't commit troops themselves um yeah. they get they get their dirty work done by other people um that was in in, in iraq uh, ideally, it would be Iran as well, and definitely in Syria and Afghanistan seems to have been a sub sub sort of text of that as well. So I don't know for sure, but that's kind of where I am at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm inclined to go with that. I'm also inclined to go with the fact that um, it creates another sort of paradigm, really, insofar as uh, security is concerned mm -hmm. in the states. I mean, we had the Patriot Act that followed it. Yeah. Where yeah. you know they kind of doubled down on fucking everybody basically, and it was, uh, you know, it was accepted because these nasty terrorists. You, you that's exactly right. You had these these definite consequences of that, and one of them was kind of like the the empirical moves by America on the behalf of Israel, as far as I see it, in the Middle East and at home. This absolute shutdown. Um, uh, are using the latest technology, which we haven't got out of yet. So we've got young yeah. people now. Growing up, that have never known a world where you don't, where you didn't have to go. You remember walking to, into an airport, and there was none of these desks or anything like that. You know, you just walk through. You don't have to go through a cavity bloody search every time you you go out of the country. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I th We've I think never given up a really on that. Big part of it, though. I th I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm convinced that. <clears throat> I mean, you know, we know that we know how the U.S. dabbles in the Middle East, and we know, you know, kind of. Well, <clears throat> I, I'll gather we know. Mm -hmm. uh, what they want out of that and you know the, the way they manipulate situations out there but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a, it was a two-fold thing to to inch the control systems of america along another little bit 
Yeah. And it, you know, it works brilliantly. Yeah. Because they always say, you know, this is just a, a temporary measure. Once things are back to normal again, of yeah, course, they of course. never get back to normal. No, they just no, get no. worse. Another kind of giveaway for me was that with Noam Chomsky, you know, like Jello used to be all over him saying, oh, this is a great, he's a great philosopher and all the rest. Is he? Fuck. Pardon my language. But yeah, you know, a weird guy. Yeah. Well, when he, when he was asked explicitly about this, he said, you know, um, do you, uh, who do you think was responsible for for 9-11? He said, it doesn't matter. He says, we don't need to we don't need to discuss this at all. It's like, oh, really? We really don't need to discuss that. So it's not a it's not a big deal at all. Noam Chomsky. And this is the same Noam Chomsky who says to us that um, there should be mandates that people get injected with a with a um, with, with an experimental drug, you know? Yeah, so I, got... I, um, I was quite fond of him for a long time. Uh, I didn't hear his his comments on on nine eleven, but when I heard the uh, the jab thing, I, I kind of mm -hmm. kind of pulled away a little bit. It's like, mm, yeah, has he been got at, or is he just like a bit more traditional than I imagined he was? I, I, there's so many of people that you could see their true colours when that came out, and you see, and it kind of like it aggravated their inner um, coward, and also their sort of. Their, their need to belong as well. You know, you've got all these presenters, all these um, celebrities and all the rest of it. We watched that, you know, and you you and I would, I think we both made the same decision when that when that thing came around, which is I'm not doing that. Um, and all these people coming out and you could see they were, they were longing for mandates. They were longing for control. They were longing to be able to, 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 to get the dissenters into, into some kind of lockup facility if possible, you know, or have at least have them stripped of all their human rights. Oh yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know if you've seen the. There's a video going around at the moment. I, think I saw it like a few months back, but I saw it again um, a few days ago. Of uh, it's just a compilation of clips of like celebrities and mm. uh, newscasters basically saying that you know if you hadn't had this experimental medical intervention, mm -hmm. uh, you should be. <laughs> This, that, and the other, you know, yeah. it was, it's quite wild watching it again, you know, and I saw things at the time, but having, watching it all put together like that was, Jesus. Really Christ. disturbing. You had Piers yeah. Morgan, didn't you? And you had all these sort of like a night, nighttime TV hosts in the States. It's like a uh, tough luck, wheezy, you know, don't, don't come into yeah. the hospital. Don't expect anything from us. And you, yeah. you probably watched that, um, the Dutch guy, I forget his name now, but there's that film, The Great Awakening, which I hate. I hate the title of because it's so intimately tied up with this whole Q nonsense. But um, the the premise behind that of this this idea about mass formation. Oh, how, he's Belgian, isn't he? Matthias the Belgian guy. Yeah, yeah. You know the you know the story, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The free uh, free flight and anxiety, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, all makes yeah. a lot of sense, doesn't it? But yeah, you, yeah. it's so weird to watch all these things now just this close to it and go geez look at that look at look at these uh, these like maniacal um uh, hospital staff doing videos and dancing you know and whilst we're supposed to be in the middle of this great crisis and the the people that we all knew as well just turning into lunatics i don't know i don't know how that happened to so many folks but it's almost as though they were primed and they were ready for it well it's the problem reaction solution thing isn't it you know Mm -hmm. Great problem. People react. You come up with a solution. They comply because they're, they're scared and they want to be safe. Yeah, and this um, this idea about loneliness as well, wasn't it? About yeah, how... yeah, yeah, and how... and you know this kind of uh, un sort of unknown anxiety that you can't pin anything on. Yes, you can't pin on anything rather. And free floating. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I experienced the hospital thing myself in a weird way. I I broke my arm. Mm -hmm. Um, just at the point where the hospitals were allegedly going crazy, so I had to go to my local hospital, which is uh, Greenwich. Yeah. And uh, the night before my appointment, it was just like through an X-ray, I think. And uh, the night before the, the appointment, I was watching the the BBC news, and they were showing like ambulances piling in and out of there, and you know, the, you know the emergency department is like rammed and yeah. you know it's chaos there and blah 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 mm. i went there at nine o'clock the next morning and it was completely empty yeah uh and i wandered around the hospitals i because i think that was around about the time i was starting to get really suspicious about things yeah and i wandered around the hospital and the hospital was, was pretty much empty 
And I suppose in on one way you can maybe explain it that people don't want to go there because they're scared of what you know they might pick up. Mm. But from that, I then went to uh, Lewisham Hospital. I, I just got a bit of a beer me bite about it. I thought I'm going to have a look and see. You know, if I'm watching all these images on the TV, you know, of, of ambulances, you know, the ambulance service being really stretched, mm-hmm. I want to see for myself what's going on. Because when I was at Greenwich, there was about 10 ambulances sitting outside and they're all sitting there having a cup of tea in a fag. Yeah. Yeah. I went to Lewisham and it was the same thing. Mm-hmm. I went to Newham General and it was the same thing, completely empty. Yeah. And yet the images that I was seeing on the television were completely different. And wasn't making any sense. And there was a woman who was, who was arrested as well for going around and taking videos inside an empty hospital, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah. Remember that? And I had yeah, the same yeah. experience up here. I, I got a, So I got a swarf in my eye, which is, you know, like a bit of steel off. I was machining something. And it was a bit of stainless. So you can't just take a magnet to that. But a piece of steel went right into the center of my eye and embedded into that. So I'm freaking out thinking, shit, I'm going to lose my sight. I'm going to have to go up to the hospital. I'll go up to the lo- local hospital there. And like normally it's, you know, it's a hospital in the Highlands, for goodness sake. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's welcoming and open, generally speaking. The doors were locked. There was an intercom outside. I had to sit on a bench, like freaking out a bit. And they go, you know, the speaking through the intercom. You know, it's like, what's wrong with you? It's like, you're going to have to wait there for a few minutes. Okay, fair enough. I get it. I get let into the place. There's, like you said, there's not a soul there at all. There's just yeah. me padding around an empty ward. They they'd got rid of all the pensioners. And most famously here as well, Sky was one of the first places they they started to note that things were happening because they kicked all the pensioners out of the, the hospital um, beds here and stuck them into an old folks home stuck up in the tree. Care, care homes, yeah. And, yeah. and then, every, then they all started to die off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But of course, it was the COVID because there's a 104-year-old woman that died of COVID. It's like, well, yeah, okay, all right. That's what it was then, eh? Yeah, I mean... I, I, I don't know if you've heard about the um, the midazolam order. Yes, that came in and how quickly that disappeared in amongst mm. all the care homes. And Good then, on that. Uh, coincidentally, you know there were loads of deaths. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a, a suppressant for the um for the respiratory system. So they were basically taking them in, hooking them up to these machines, and then stopping them breathing. And they weren't giving them any water or food as well. It's just like, yeah. okay, great. So you're killing people. When they come in there, you're killing them. And you know damn well that there's a lot of nurses and doctors that wanted to say something but never did. So all of these people, it's like, why did nobody stand up and say anything? People, I mean, that 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 applies to the scientific community as well, though. I think, yes, you know, at the time, well, even now, you know, I mean, if you consider the way that how um, universities are funded, you know the science faculties and stuff. They're, most of their funding comes from big pharma. Mm. Yeah. So, so if you have a point of view that's opposing to, you know, the narrative that big pharma or your fund, your funders mm. want to portray, then your fund is pulled. Yeah. Or you lose your job, you lose your livelihood, you can't support your wife and kids. You yeah. Know, people are kind of, you know, scared into into compliance, and they hope that it's not going to be as bad as maybe it could be and you know actually it's yeah. turned out but they're, they're also they're waiting for somebody else to stand up and say something aren't they and so they're waiting for somebody else to say well i'm prepared to lose my job and you had i think it was like 70 000, um nurses and doctors said they weren't going to do it and they lost their jobs as a consequence it's like that that didn't even do it it just made everybody more scared and they just said well, well, I, okay I, I was chatting to uh my mum, my mother's carer, my mum's like 90 odd, she has a carer. Okay. That came to visit at the time. And uh, she was, you know, in a right state, you know, I'm going to have to resign because I don't want this thing. Mm. And um, the thing is, there was no, there's no, there was never any kind of legislative process that said that you could fire someone yes. for not taking an experimental medical intervention. Yeah. It this was, was all fear mongering and bluff. Yeah. It and, was. and people just, you know, like everything else, people just like fell for it and were really fearful of losing their jobs. So some of them went along and, and, and took it. Yes. You know, I mean, they thought you know, it might I, happen. I, I read at the time um, I'd started to get involved in this kind of little legal kind of thing, a, a group of people like sort of ex lawyers, barristers. That had seen through all of this, 
Mm -hmm. And they were looking at the legislation and they were kind of saying, well, they said, this is cobblers, you know, you can't do this. Yeah. And, um, but obviously, you know, that wasn't the word on the street for people. So they, they, they went along with it and that it's goes like, right the way up the scale, you know, from, you know, from basic hospital staff to carers to, yeah. you know, probably people pretty near the top, I can imagine. Yeah. All consensual. It's like if, yeah. if you don't say anything, I won't say anything, and we'll keep this keep we'll keep going the way we're going. And hope it goes away. Yeah, hope it goes. And they, of course, there's that thing. First of all, they were saying, well, when they when they started to lock everybody down in Italy, which was like the test case, they were saying over here we couldn't believe it. We were looking at that, and, and we couldn't believe that they could get away with it. And then we realised they could, and we realised that we could. So yeah. they were excited about this this opportunity to be able to um, actually psychologically damage everybody and they're still damaged they're still damaged you look at them out there and the people have, yeah and they're, they're ready to go again because they they found a kind of like a, a commonality in this banal um chit chat about oh what did you have the moderna oh did you have the pfizer oh i love the pfizer you know this kind yeah. of they did it's just it, it created a sort of consensual club of lunatics who didn't realize that they've actually they've been completely they've been completely brainwashed you know well, I think it 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 starts earlier than that, though, doesn't it? It's it's like, you know, in a weird way. I mean, you could take it back to to when you're a kid and when you're at school, your your kind of compliance with with authority and stuff. Mm. You know, you 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 take it. Most people kind of take it for granted that what the government tells them is right, and if you go against that, it's wrong, mm. and the government is there to look after you. And make sure everything is good. Make sure the roads are all nice. The street lights are there, and you know, you pay your taxes, and you know, you fund the health service. And mm. people have just got that inbuilt thing that's given to them, you know, from as soon as they set foot in the classroom, and that's with most people almost all their lives. Yeah. So to look beyond that <clears throat> takes a bit of doing, you know. I think in our respect, we like, you know, I said the other day we. We were kind of lucky to be born when we were in that time where the sort of punk thing came along and it made it called it jarred something in us, didn't it? You know, to yeah. to kind of look outside the box, you know, for want of a cliche. Yeah, I mean, I mean most I'm... people don't get that opportunity and, and and consequently if all they do is go to work, you know, become a wage slave, that's what you're trained to do from school. Mm. You you leave work, you come home, you put the telly on, you have your dinner, you watch the news maybe, and then you watch EastEnders or whatever it is. But that's your that's your window on the world, your and, bubble, and yeah. that's the way it's been all your life. So that's... to have anything outside of that hit you, it's a real jar, and 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 some people even if they kind of think there might be a grain of truth in it, it's it's too upsetting for them to, oh, well, I, I think it's too upsetting for them to get involved in. It's yeah. like, I just want to put my head down and get through to the weekend and go on yeah. holiday. They can't oh, walk it back. But, there's, but everybody at the moment, they're surrounded by these kind of like contradictions because, you know, if I was living in London, you know, you have all the you know, the ULES nonsense going on, things like that, and you've got you know the constant process. You've got the the just stop oil people, which is basically a load of toffs, which are um, themselves funded by by the oil, oil companies. You know, it's like everything yeah. is so obvious. Um, even, you don't really need to even scratch the surface that much anymore. It's all so bloody obvious, and so, and so I think that uh, at one level, even Joe Normal sitting back at home going back home after after his work and watching the tally i think it's getting through to him as well i think at some I, level I you think know, it either... is but but i think that the most people haven't had any kind of experience of how to deal with something like that once they yeah. do start to catch on to things it's not within their you know it's never been within their kind of remit to kind of to to figure out how to react to it yeah, but, but I mean, what, how do they react to it? Because all of the communities, all of our traditional relationships are being broken up and atomized. So, you know, it, it, just accept it because it's of the greater good. Well, yeah, accept it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I know damn well that there's a lot of people who have tried to walk this thing back and uh, who are not, at, they're not at ease with it at all. You know, they know something yeah. happened 
Um, and it must be like a, like a real itch that you can't scratch. So you're trying to figure out what to do with that. You either bury it so deep in your unconscious that you that you've pretty much forgotten it and you just act as if everything was fine and normal or you're going to have problems because something happened to you and this i'm talking to talking about a lot of my friends um people in my circle and stuff like that and i've said this before it wasn't wasn't such a big deal to me because i'd already been cancelled before this but when that happened and everybody started losing their friends over these issues you you suddenly saw how how entrenched they are in this weird kind of um like you say it's a sort of faith in a system but it is almost like a religious faith because there's nothing else that they they can hang on to when it comes down to it so it's, they can it's a it's a superstition almost yeah yeah <laughs> you know black magic <clears throat> yeah yeah um... uh, anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna make a proposition to you i'm gonna say that country music is the new punk rock now because uh, uh rich mm, rich men north of richmond Go on. Yeah, I, I I heard uh I can't remember who it was uh -huh. uh the other week. Yeah. And, and I liked it. Yeah. Well, I think country, uh, country music's pretty cool anyway, yeah. some of it. Well, Rich men north of Richmond, and you've got that um try that in a small town as well. You know, I mean we might not agree over that one, but we know broadly speaking what it is. It's like people basically looking after their own and protecting their own interests and not taking any of this um manufactured um astroturfed BLM bullshit. And all the and all the accompanying nonsense that goes with it, and that that aggravates these um these stupid children, you know, predominantly white children from nice backgrounds who think that they're doing everybody a favor, Rem reminding me of that old Amoebic song, the first Amoebic thing that ever came out, a, a university challenge, where the lyric was "Poor little black man can't help himself, needs some help from somebody else." You know, we I, we couldn't do that these days. People would go, "What are you talking about?" It's so obvious, you know. It's a patronizing attitude of of sort of like of people that we grew up with. It, it just annoys the shit out of me. It really does. I, I, um, I, I'm into football. I've always been into football. And the thing that really bugs me at the moment is this taking the knee thing. Before oh, God. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know? Yeah. Do, do you not think that, I mean, I, there was, it's, there's consciousness coming across, um, right across the spectrum, you know? So it's good to see sort of black folks were waking up to it white folks and everybody in between as well you know it's like we're all kind of like realizing that there's been a play on for a long time we we kind of knew that but when they try to ramp it up so much and you can see the hand behind it saying that everybody needs to be atomized and set up into little groups of opposition you can you can get a broad perspective even i guess in, within the football thing as well you go actually this isn't right you know teams teams are fine but we don't need to be fighting each other you know yeah, I mean, you know, most most of my black friends have seen through the whole BLM thing. Mm, good. You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's just because of the circles that I run in, but it's you know, it's it's very clear to them what's going on. Yeah. And that that's without you know bringing in the whole SOAS thing and all the rest of it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The pseudo Marxist bullshit. It's like, how, how did people ever buy into that? I mean, honestly, you know, you got this kind of like again a pseudo intellectual karl marx who never did a fucking day's work in his life and was a very distasteful individual and uh and yet he he you know he, he he's, he's the go-to for so many people you know wouldn't it be wonderful if we had this kind of like workers utopia it's like it doesn't work like that in the real world you know we all we do have this tendency toward hierarchy i think we're coming toward the end of this aren't we there's like there's there's a couple of minutes left on this Anything, anything you want to, any notes you got about the news going on just now? Oh, fuck me, there's loads. I I, I made some notes, actually. Well, and then fire them in. Well, yeah, but there's, there's shit loads of it, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> right, give me give me one nugget. Come on, we've got two minutes left. Uh, I don't know. Um, the the cancel culture, I think the way things have been shut down. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I just read something today, actually, about how the EU are uh, proposing to shut down uh, disinformation on uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. They're talking about, um, I don't know, I didn't read the whole article, but it's a proposal to, to basically fucking remove um, either accounts. I mean, I know that's been done, but it's not been done officially. It's been done by, uh, you know, the, the companies themselves. One thing that that did strike me at the beginning of all of this is um, I put a link to. Have you seen the Plandemic documentary? Yeah. Uh, I put a link to that up on the 
the band's Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And, and along with it, I said, I would put a little thing on it, just a little strap by and saying this will probably be flagged up as being misrepresentation, of, you know, misinformation rather and all the rest of it. Sure enough, it was. Mm. And I looked at the comments that followed it. And there was this whole stream of comments. Oh, you know, old crazy people gone mad, you know, you yeah. know, it's conspiracy, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and it sort of um it it made me realize that the whole world has gravitated towards social media and gravitated towards like Facebook, Instagram, blah, 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 blah. And in a way, or in a sense, I look at it is that when when the internet first kind of like came about, people had, you know, Yahoo email addresses and this and that and the other, and you would email each other. And that was a great way of, you know, integrating with like your friends, et cetera, et cetera. Then Facebook came along and these kind of social media platforms came along and they made it so easy for people to get involved with other people like that. It mm. took away their kind of um, individuality. Yeah. It took away their kind of uh, independence, if you like, and they became dependent on these social media platforms. Yeah, and that's where they got their news from, you know, that they didn't see yeah. on TV. Bubbles of consent. And, and, then they, but, and then they came to sort of expect that to be some kind of public service, which it isn't. Yeah. You know, it's run by a corporation. It's got corporate interests. It's got shareholders. Mm. It's got a narrative that it wants to convey. Mm-hmm. And if you go against that narrative, you shouldn't be surprised to be taken down kind of thing. Yeah. You on, know, yeah. it made me really acutely aware of that. And, yeah, and that's kind of where I am now, really. It's 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 a it's a weird place. Yeah, this idea about um, <sighs> Facebook and all those sort of like, yeah, consensual bubble groups, Um we do it to ourselves, though, don't we? Um, we look for people that we have things in common with, and then we suddenly find there's a kind of rigidity about it um, that you can't get out of. Uh, you want well, to say to be something. honest, I've never looked. I've never looked for that in Facebook. Mm. I mean, I I have. I'm on Facebook uh, primarily because of the band thing, and and I had the studio which needed some kind of outlet like that. Mm-hmm. I have one Facebook friend, and. Uh, and that was done by accident. Oh, oh brilliant. <laughs> Lucky you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I don't really participate in it much at all, you know. It's not – I th- well, I think I understand it for what it is, and I, and I don't I don't really engage, you know. Do you do anything like um, Twitter or any of that sort of stuff? No, none of it. <laughs> me, me neither. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit old um, – for that lot now maybe but um yeah facebook i just did it because of business um yeah well, that's fine here that was, that was the only reason yeah try to keep that separate from other stuff but i did have a personal profile and when when everything went tits up for me um i just that disengaged fun, from that. sorry <laughs> i bet that was fun at that point but yeah lovely lovely really um uh yeah a lot of uh, basically major gaslighting from everybody it's like I was the problem um, and I'm mental um, where I was just saying, oh, maybe there's some other things we can look at here. And it's like, yeah, you know, I didn't realize that people's like bar for taboo was so uh, was yeah. so kind of like low, but also so solid as well. It's like they, they just can't go some places at all. They just are completely inflexible. It's it's like. Um... The last few years has been like a, a another level of understanding for me. Mm. Um, you know, I thought I was kind of switched on, you know, a little bit, but the last few years is it's I've been kind of fuck me. I didn't realize it was like that. Mm. <laughs> you know, like people generally I didn't realize it was yeah, people and things and fucking everything. You know, it was uh, the way people react to stuff and and the 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 things that other people will do mm-hmm. in order to get what they want. It's, it's like, fuck, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just a mad place at the moment. I think. Yeah. I think, I think we are, you know, reaching a tipping point one way or the other where, uh, you know, something's going to have to give mm. because I think that there are enough, 
Well, there, you know, there are more and more people now starting to think, mm, I don't know about this shit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the issue is, as I said earlier, I think is that they're not trained, <laughs> if that's the right word, to know what to do about it. I mean, you know, people will partake in the political system. I oh, will just vote them out. Mm -hmm. Right on. Do you think that's going to change something then, do you? Yeah, right. I think you perhaps know, it's, it's, it's way beyond that. And we're also, you know, we've become very used to our our comfort as well, you know. Um, and we're unwilling to step outside of that. It's like there's a there is comfort in, you know, in other people and as I say, con consensual views and all that kind of stuff. It's difficult to be able to shake yourself awake and say, actually, I haven't finished my my journey yet. I haven't finished what I'm supposed to be doing. There's still there's still work to do. And that work is going to require that I step outside of the tribe and go outside of the village and I find things that other people haven't found, you know? Um, that yeah, I, was, I, I define that clearly, problem with that. Yeah, well, I, I define it clearly as my job um, when I, when all my stuff sparked up because I, set, I saw myself as a, as a musician, well, not a great musician, but as a, somebody that was trying to trying to trying to push some um, some introspection really in people, and that in order to do that, I'd have to go into areas that were uncomfortable or that I hadn't looked into to before. Um, otherwise, you're not you're not doing anything new. There's all these your know, bands that like to describe themselves as being you know sort of like great dystopian view of the future and yeah brave new interpretations of this and that oh they fuck you know there's very few people doing anything anymore at all as I say you know country music is the new punk rock you come back to basics and go we just need people that are making simple statements sometimes yeah I, I think um, people at the end of the day haven't got very much imagination. Not mm. to be disparaging, but you know they're not they're not encouraged to have imagination. They're not encouraged to have creativity, mm. and 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 that brings with it other realms, isn't it? You know, yeah. If you're if you're that way inclined, then then you do explore things. Yeah, and um, the option. Do and you? I, I I really enjoy it. You know, I enjoy learning new things. I, I enjoy, you know, in a perverse way, finding out if I'm wrong because when I'm when that happens, I've learned something new. Yeah, but you don't do that unless you push yourself out there to to try and find out in the first place. Yeah, you know, that's, that's I think a, a lot of people are a bit scared to be proven wrong. Scared to be wrong, yeah. So consequently, they don't really put themselves out there. Yeah, you know, in the you know, but they don't put their heads above water in the first place. Yeah, but there's nothing like you say. It's, there's uh, nothing wrong with that. You know. It's part of growing up. It's like the fact that you you you, you need to keep on having some kind yeah. of dialogue going and. Um, Somebody will come to you and they'll they'll tell you something you never knew at all before. And it's like, well, you have to do something with that. Either you bury it and you start shouting defensively about it, or you say, Okay, right, let me pull that one in and have a look at it and see how see how that affects me and my view of the of the world. I might have to, you know, it is recalibrating, it's reorientating, it's re it's trimming your sails, you know. And well, through also that, go on. Sorry, go on, I'll let you finish. No, and, and through, through that process as well, you know, you, I think you mentioned it in the in the last talk that we were going through as well. You're gonna you're gonna get a lot of you're gonna separate the wheat from the chaff, really. Um, you are gonna lose a lot of people um because they simply don't want to do it. They want to stay within the the comfort of the the known world, whereas you 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 yourself are probably actually quite keen to go into areas that 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 you don't know because it's something really boring and mundane about staying within a, a worldview that you've had your entire life. And there's something like a, you know, this, this extended kind of like ad, uh, adolescence that so many people cling on to. Um, they stop the adventure and the adventure must keep going as far as I see. Well, I think most people aren't encouraged to be adventurous in the first place. Mm. You know, it's, Going back to what I said earlier, it's you, you're not you're not brought up to be adventurous. You're brought up to conform and and to to fit inside the machine one yeah. way or another. Yeah. You know, no matter you know, you might exist on the periphery of the machine, but you're still inside the machine, and you still conform to the machine's parameters. Yeah. Um. And it takes. You know, a particularly, I don't know what you would call it, belligerent 
person or, or something like that to to uh, to go no you know it's it's bigger than that the world is bigger than that and and i want to know you know i've only got a finite number of years here and i, I want to explore as much as i can and and that means looking at areas that you didn't look at before obviously are, are you uh, do you I have know, a, I, I, do you have like a view of well, what do you think we're doing here uh, from, from your point of view what what are we doing what's like what is life experience about what is it what's this thing about um you mean the meaning of life yeah or what yeah i mean what's what um, why, why, why are we incarnated what's the job if there is a job what's it for oh, i haven't got the foggiest do you think I mean, about... all, all, all i all i can imagine is is that you know as far as i'm aware we have this finite time where you know our uh, um soul or sensibility or whatever you want to say is active and recognizable within ourselves mm. and uh and you you try and explore that and push that as as far as you can i think mm-hmm. um you know in in loads of different ways you know um do, do you as think far as any sort of cr- go on sorry do you i mean do you think there's kind of like a moral imperative that that you have to follow or do you think some people simply don't have that at all i think most people have it but there's greater or lesser importance put on it mm. you know I, I think i'm doing that you know thing again i haven't been counting these yeah that's all right um <laughs> you know i think some people um it drives some people and it doesn't drive others so much and I can understand why, you know, and um, done it again. Um, <laughs> and I don't, I wouldn't hold that against them because I, because like I say, I do understand why. I mean, I do it myself to a certain extent. I'm sure you do. You know, we all have little kind of moments where we sort of do things. And then, you know, if you look at them in retrospect, you think, why the fuck did I do that? Mm. Why did, you know, what made me think of doing that? You know, none of us are perfect and we all kind of, you know, make weird decisions occasionally yeah and um it's so so i don't really i wouldn't chastise people for for being different to me you know in, in the more yeah. conventional sense yeah but i do like understand why everybody has I can't a be like that myself <laughs> yeah so you know, i'm kind of drawn i just keep on uh, my it's just questions for me it's always questions i don't really have I don't have an overarching definite answer to anything yet at all. And I find the more, the more I'm looking into stuff, the more confusing it gets in some ways as well. Um, Cause you know, there's these yeah. big questions about the, you know, the, the what's, what is reality and what is life and what, what happens after we die is or anything like that, you know, these kind of like universal motifs and they've, they've always troubled me and they've always bugged me. And I guess you 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 have to come to terms with there's some things that you can't do anything about and other other ones that you, you can with ayahuasca sorry have i done have it you dabbled with ayahuasca no no i'm i'm kind of keen to do something like that or dmt but well may, maybe not dmt because that's just kind of like yeah visual stuff and things but ayahuasca the yeah, genuine kind of teaching experience yeah yeah yeah, have you that, done it? That, that, that interests me. Have, I haven't, no. And, and it's it's another little thing kind of on my radar, but recent <laughs> years I've kind of thought, mm, I don't know if I'm in the right sort of condition to do it, but I would like to, I think. It seems to be it one just, of... It sounds, it sounds to me like the, the... I mean, I was always really into LSD yeah. and that kind of thing. And it's, you know, it's a real extension of that, you know, in a much broader sense to me. Yeah. So in that respect, that it really interests me and in terms of like you know answering your question i think that's might be a good little thing to explore yeah to try and get some what we what we perceive as um as outside information your or, or some interaction with the with the body of nature itself that seems to be yeah. the general experience that people have is is this um if they're lucky it's like a communication from the earth itself which i do 
that's that's my headspace you know i'm very i'm very much interested in the in the gnostic ideas of the living earth um and how how she communicates with us and i can see that as being an ideal way of doing that but what i also find is some of the people that that get involved in that it's kind of like the same as everything else is it, it, you you kind of you take away what you bring with you so you know i i i've known people that have had these experiences but because of the the setting um and the other people around there ha- there can be manipulative pe- manipulative people involved in that experience itself so it's like the message goes mm. through several filters rather than than clean i'd like it to be clean you know what i mean well i think you know <clears throat> In, in respect to that, I think it's probably the kind of thing you need to do on your own. Yeah. You know, yeah. you need to, to to just be somewhere completely, you know, wilderness and do it on your own. Which, so, so you haven't got any external influences apart from, you know, nature and what's around you. Also, though, is... But it's probably probably a bit scary to 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 look at it like that. I yeah, imagine. but I mean, is, is ayahuasca like a uniquely sort of south american oriented experience because you know we do have psilocybin over here and we've all done that and it's kind of like it's a very kind of like celtic earthy sort of thing so i'm wondering whether yeah whether geographical places have particular um entheogenic um uh plants that are very specific to the the mentality of the native yeah i'm sure they do yeah, yeah. yeah. because yeah, you know i'm i, I don't so. know I, I I am very uh, I'm very insistent about this idea that we're not all the same. I don't think we're all the same at all. I think cultural cultural groups are <laughs> distinctly different throughout the world, and that's not a bad thing at all. It's in fact it's a, the, exactly the opposite. It's a wonderful thing. Well, it's that, just a reality, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a reality. It's, it's you, know, you can't change that. Yeah, and you get all these people talking about like diversity, and that's they don't mean that. They mean the exact opposite. They mean the homogeneity. They mean pushing everybody into the same kind of like spectrum. Whereas, you know, as I said, this thing about cultural differences being being represented perhaps in the way that we we ingest even the substances that we use to to go into our particular um, states of seeing. You know, it's in the in the West been very much this sort of thing about alcohol and. It used to be in the the Eleusinian mysteries in in Greece. They had this kind of way of preparing wine, which seems to have been very very different to anything that we perceive as alcohol these days, and much more of a, a an interactive psychotropic um, uh, device that they used to to, uh, to 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 take people through the mystery experience. Um, and that's come right. down to us the condensation of that as being wine as being a general idea, when it's nothing to do with wine really. Yeah, I mean, I think you you've got to apply that to how Western culture, in particular, has developed anyway through through the years. It's everything has become watered down and and sort of um, conveyor belt, you know, homogenized and you know made into this thing that's somewhat different from how it originated. Mm. Um, <laughs> I think that kind of explains a little bit of that, really. You know. Um, There's a push at the moment mean... toward um, psychedelics, uh, for so-called for the treatment of you know um, of mental illness, uh, PTSD, yeah. all that kind of stuff as well. I could see the application of that, but there's the other side of me which is very wary about that because as soon as something becomes mainstream and becomes the thing that people should be doing, then I'm going, oh, okay, well, what do they get out of it? Because there's always something that they're going to get out of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, have you have you seen a documentary called uh, I think it's called Fantastic Fungi? No, I think it's a, it might have been, I think it might even be a Netflix thing. It's uh, sort of about the sort of medicinal benefits of of um, psilocybin and things like that. It's it's quite an interesting watch, mm-hmm. considering it's on that kind of a platform, you know. Yeah, um, the, the end of life. Yeah, I know what you mean about you know it, it, it sort of gets controlled and it gets kind of. Uh, made into a sort of slightly you know manipulative kind of uh situation when it when it gets to the point where the mainstream kind of like you know uh encourages it it's like well when i was um, young i would have been in favor of like legalizing um grass and all that and i guess you know i'm not i'm not in favor of 
delegalizing anything really but you know the fact that it's been taken on board in the states and it is a big industry for people and then you have to look and you have to say well what is the end result of that um and it's kind of just a that the normal thing about the it's just a whole load of people sort of munted and not being involved with stuff um so i don't know whether that's great well, yeah or i mean i i, I kind of think that Nothing should be illegal. I mean, the, no. the whole legal thing in itself is just nonsensical. It's, it's just a load of made up nonsense. Mm. But I think you have to take like the, the legalization of like cannabis and stuff like that um, together with the sort of society that, that people exist within and the, the um, how the society around them kind of shapes their thoughts and views in the first place mm. it's not like you know you, you're kind of in this completely open environment where everything is lovely and there aren't nasty people trying to do things and there aren't people trying to manipulate situations etc cetera, etc cetera. you're kind of in the middle of that sort of ingesting this substance and getting shit faced and you're 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 kind of um you're being not manipulated, but you're being sort of a what's around you is 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 having an influence on that experience. Yeah. So you're not really experiencing it in a in a in a true sense. You're experiencing it in, under the you know inside the constraints of the society that you live in. Which An is analogy. Sort of being a bit fucked up. You know. Yeah. When when I was a kid. I don't know whether this experience was the same for you. I mean, it was the, obviously we were always after the forbidden or, you know, the, the, all that kind of stuff. So we, tr we were trying all the legal highs that you could and stuff. And then the first, you know, getting hold of actual um, uh, cannabis and, and smoke and all that kind of stuff. And nothing happened for quite a while. And I had this several times and it's like, well, what's supposed to be happening here? And then just one evening things took off Um listening to good music and then went out for a walk in the in the forest with these other guys and it's just like wow this is really amazing um real really mind opening really special and maybe maybe you've been maybe I mean, you've what? been given shit lebanese yeah yeah well that probably maybe yeah, you've been yeah. given shit lebanese hash or something shit, le and plus, yeah and plus uh, if, if anybody had a little blim of it they'd hardly use anything in a spliff back then as well so it's like okay so yeah get yeah. wasted and then the 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 thing after that was always trying to chase after that that initial experience um which was yeah. really you know it's quite enlightening and, and really enjoyable and it was never really it was never something you could really reproduce you can get wasted and then we we moved up to bristol and we, we were starting to deal acid and we were we were getting it from the from the festivals and selling it on the streets there and doing quite a lot of acid you know um but at that time kind of quite naively as well so doing a lot of gear and then being in the middle of St Paul's and not realizing that you're actually pretty vulnerable, so it was like a there was a local gang yeah. that, that bust into the place, and we're all like completely, you know, out of our faces. Um, and of course, it was difficult to pull back from that and to get into a position where you could go right, okay, we we need to take care of business here. You know, it's not it's not a good situation, um, and that kind of ruined it. It's like that that the innocence of having that experience was gone after that it was just like well you've got to be careful what you do where you do it you know scene and setting um otherwise you're gonna have a bad one yeah i i found that i could never be inside I, I always had to go outside and if i wasn't outside i was always a bit disgruntled that i couldn't be yeah you know i i felt that uh outside kind of in a sense anything could happen and inside it was very predictable yeah and i and i like the sense of anything could happen you yeah know, I, and and I, I think i've always been a bit like that yeah okay uh pete um yeah, is, I mean, is, is, is there anything bugging you at the moment that you need to talk about uh not particularly no <laughs> Are, are you, um, are well, you, I mean, just, aside you know, from like the obvious bullshit that's everywhere, but uh, you know, yeah, I mean, what, it's, where, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Huh? I mean, I mean, where where is your head at right now? What you, what's interesting you right now? Are you reading anything? Are is are you into stuff or what is it? Where where is your um, actually today? I just got a copy of uh, Rick Rubin's um, book, 
Mm. Uh, his name escapes me. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Rick Rubin. He's like a music producer kind of thing. But he's uh, he's kind of uh, raised on dirt is to kind of encourage people's creativity. And he's a bit unusual, a bit of an unusual character. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I'll start reading that tonight. Um, okay. I'm going to send you something, actually, in the next couple of days. I think it turned up yesterday. Yeah. Uh, which I, w- I won't say what it is at the moment. It's just it's another little bookie. Okay. And it's uh, it's it's not something that you're gonna it's gonna provide you with any great revelation, but it's uh, it's sometimes it's nice to read something that kind of reminds you that you that you're not mad. Yeah. You know? And it, it's one of those kind of things. Yeah. Well, I, I, um, I like I like books that get me into trouble as well, of course. What kind of books are they? Oh, really books like the forbidden books. Know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting that you know you go you go looking for stuff I, 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 down the rabbit holes that I've been down. It's like very, very difficult to find um, information to to find original books and stuff. And you you get to these dead ends. It's like where can I find even a PDF of such and such? You know, I might want to read about Paul Racine or yeah. something like that. And it's like absolutely bloody impossible. Well, it's not. It's always got, of course it's not. It's not impossible. It's just very difficult and it's often expensive as well. Although it's like. Um, yeah, it is. like an acquired taste for fine wines, you know, very, very rare um, bits and pieces. Yeah, I got, I got the the thing that I'm going to send you. Um, I kind of thought it was a normal kind of bookshop type thing. I got it from, um, and the the when, when it arrived today, the uh, the seller put a little note in with it, little handwritten note mm. saying, "Oh, you know, hi Pete, thanks for buying it." Blah 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 blah. And I looked at looked him up and he's a bit of a bit of a strange dude okay i think uh you know there are obviously you know there are places out there aren't there that you can get odd books yeah <laughs> odd literature yeah uh i think i may, may have stumbled across one of those um, brilliant um, wittingly yeah that's great isn't it it's like yeah the, the the secret things it's always good to to know these secret places where people not everybody knows about it you know with the ubiquitous um, stuff in, on YouTube and and all the social media. It's like everybody knows about bloody everything now. Yeah. You find interesting things there, hidden in dark corners, you know. Yeah, good. I'm glad there's still dark corners. Right, mate. Oh, yeah. I think we should, um, right. we should sign off and uh, wish adieu to anybody that's been hanging around listening for long enough. Um, and you know. uh, I'll look forward to that book uh, and catch up with you soon, eh? All right. Yeah, I'll give you a ring at some point and uh, I'll uh, figure out maybe taking a trip up there. Yeah, good.